All right. So just yesterday, Trey went ahead and launched their latest version. And today in this video, we're going to check it out. And more importantly, the best thing here is that Trey Solo is completely free for the next three days. And if you want to, you can straight up go ahead and click the link in the description below. Download the latest version of Trey and start using it right away completely for free. And again, this is only valid till 15th of November. So make use of it. And this right here is the official website of Trey. And if you haven't already downloaded the same, all you have to do is to click on this download button right here and download and install Tray to your computer. And here it says Tray 3.0 and this right here is the latest version. And as you can see in here, I have downloaded and installed Tray 3.0 and I have opened up the same in here and it says new solo agent. And okay, right off the bat, when you open Tray for the first time, this is going to be the kind of interface that you will see. And we have slight changes to here and there. So first of all, it says new solo agent. Choose a solo agent to start building and chatting instantly. And right now you can find two options in here. So earlier we only had like solo builder, right? Right now we have solo coder and solo builder. And solo builder is the one that you would use if you want the AI to build the complete product end to end from the initial idea to complete execution and deployment. If that is what you're looking for, then solo builder is the one that you need to use. And again, we have already created a video related to the same. And now here we also have something new called a solo coder. And as you can see, it says deep understanding of complex tasks and handles iterations, bug fixes and refactoring in large projects, plan tasks intelligently and drive execution with precision and orchestrates intelligent multi-agent collaboration. And the solo coder is the one that you should use if you want to go deep and want to tackle complex problems. And that is basically the idea. And as you can see in here, it says solo free trial and it is available till 15th of November. So definitely make sure to make use of this one. And towards the right side in here, we can find a bunch of options like editor doc view terminal browser diff view figma integrations agents and mcp so a bunch of these features were already in and again if you want to turn a figma file into code well you can select the figma option and then give the figma file and again the interesting thing is that if you now click on this integrations option right here you'll be able to find all the direct integrations that are available in solo right and it says at present integrated tools can only be used in solo builder mode so basically if you want to let's say use any of these tools you will have to make sure you are using solo builder and the interesting thing here is that once you connect superbase versal openai anthropic gemini or whatever service in here then you can go ahead and give a prompt and the ai agent itself will go ahead and implement the same in your application okay in which way is enough talking so i'll go ahead and open a new project so this right here is the project that I'll open, which is basically a blank Next.js project, which is okay. So this right here is the project and I have opened up the same in here. And first of all, you can choose between solo builder and solo coder. So in this case, solo coder is the new one. So I'll select solo coder for the time being and maybe I can make it full screen just like this. And okay, so here we have opened up the project. And first of all, this right here is a project like a blank Next.js project and I'm planning to create a QR code generator website. So basically the idea is that the user should be able to enter a piece of text or URL and upon clicking a button, our website will generate a QR code. Easy, right? So I can go ahead and give a prompt. So I have selected solo coder and I can go ahead and say, can you please create a QR code generator website? The user should be able to enter a text content and upon clicking the generate button, our website will create a QR code and gives users the option to download the same. I have already installed Next.js and you can take it up from here. So this right here is the prompt I'll begin with. And another thing to note here is that both solo coder and solo builder need huge amounts of token to work with. And for the same reason, as you can see, the max mode is enabled by default. And only if you have max mode, can you use solo coder and builder, I believe. In which case, I'll go ahead and hit send and let's see. There you go. As soon as I went ahead and gave this prompt, the AI has started working on the same. So it is going through a thinking process. And by the way, I don't really have a subscription on Trey yet. And I'm still using it on the free trial, by the way, which is uh, available till 15th of November. Okay, so right now the solo coder AI agent is going through our code base and, you know, it's actually finding all the files and uh, folders that we already have. And after it gets everything, it will go ahead and create the app that we asked for. So it will take some time. So let's just wait for it. All right. So there you go. After thinking for some time, it has went ahead and created three to do items. So the first one says implement QR code generated UI on the home page, generate QR via external API and display image, and also add download button to save QR as PNG. All right. So it seems like it is using an external API. I believe we have a couple of packages that is capable enough to generate QR, right? In which case, let's see. Okay. So right now it has implemented QR generation using a public API. 
interesting so maybe i can open it up so i believe it is using an api from qrserver.com okay and it says okay uh okay here we have the preview opened up and there you go here we have a qr code website and all i have to do is to enter some content in here and if i click on generate okay there you go here we have the qr code and if i click on this download png button i have the option to save it as well so the feature that we asked for is implemented and there you go here i can find all the details and this right here is the basic flow of using solo builder but the interesting thing is that you can now have multiple sub agents running in parallel for example let's say you could spin up a new agent to do a specific task and another agent to do a different task for example towards the right side here i can find all the tasks that i currently have right so right now it has created this qr code generator website like implemented the actual functionality next step i'll go ahead and spin up a new agent and i'll go ahead and say can you please go ahead and create a new about us page for our website and i'll hit enter and next step i can go ahead and spin up a new agent and say can you please go ahead and create a new contact us page and just for example here i went ahead and gave two tasks that is one for creating an about page and the other one for creating a contact page and as you can see both of these agents are running in parallel so that's basically yet another cool thing so if you want to let's say implement two separate features well you don't have to wait for one agent to complete even before the agent completes the task you can spin up two different ai agents and give a task and the ai will process it parallelly and in this case for example i went ahead and asked to create two pages but in your case it could be a feature request a bug fix or whatever that be you can go ahead and invoke and run agents in parallel so that's also one more new cool feature in the newest version of tray and there you go here we have like a simple about page all right so it seems like the contact page is also implemented so i can visit the contact section and there you go here we have the contact page so that's also working so basically i ran two agents in parallel and next up if i click on this plus button towards the top i can now create custom agents so all i'll do is i'll click on this option that says agent and now i can click on this create option and now you can go ahead and create a agent to do a specific task so in this case let's just say i want to create a ai agent and the specific functionality that the agent only has to focus is to uh, let's say refactor the code base so i can go ahead and describe that in here and we can use the smart generate agent pop up to create your ai agent an ai agent that finds and refactor files within the code base and now i'll click on this generate option right here if you don't use the smart generate option right here you can go ahead and manually fill in all these details like name prompt and all this stuff and you can also create a agent manually as well but here we already have the smart generate agent option so why not just use it right let's see and there you go it says smart generation succeeded and the ai itself has went ahead and filled in all the details for the ai agent right here so the name is code refactor here we have the prompt what to call the english identifier that is the identifier for this particular agent that is code base refactor okay all of that looks good and if you want to add mcp you have the option for that too i'll click on create and yep i'll click on use now so there you go here we have the newly created agent that is code refactor agent and now you can go ahead and give a prompt and ask the ai to sort of let's say refactor the code and the custom agent that we built will go ahead and do the same so now i'll put it back to solo code and maybe i can open a new task and another interesting feature that i like a lot in tray is that if i click on this plus button right here i can find an option that says figma and if i click on the same i can now log into my figma account and select a design and i can ask the solo agent to turn that particular design into code and the interesting thing here is that you don't really have to let's say log into figma from a different browser you can actually use the built-in browser within tray to do the same and you can just go ahead and tell the ai agent that you want to uh, turn the selected design into code and it will do it for you and not just that if you want to you can open this browser interface and you can actually ask it to visit websites for example let's say github.com and you can go ahead and sign in to your account and you can maybe open a repo and then go through all the you know open prs you can review them or let's say view all the issues and directly communicate with the solo agent as well so that is also one more cool feature so basically you have the web browser baked right into tray so that's also one more cool thing so these are some of the newest features in tray 3.0 and i also want to take a second to talk about testprite.com which is actually a ai powered software testing agent for example, let's say you used uh, Tray AI to build something and you wipe coded something. And now how will you make sure that the product that you built is actually safe, secure and does not have any security vulnerabilities, bugs or any issues? 
Well, how about we use yet another AI agent that uh, automates the entire process of software testing? Well, that's exactly what TestSprite does. So here I have opened up TestSprite and as you can see, it says built for modern coders, the AI agent that tests, fix and validates your software. And if you do want to use TestSprite, all you have to do is to click the first link in the description below and head over to testsprite.com and you can go ahead and sign up for a new account. And TestSprite is also free for a limited time. So you can go ahead and make use of the same. And in my case, I already have an account. So I'll go ahead and sign in. And then I'll click on this option right here that says try MCP free. So the idea here is that I'll go ahead and add the test sprite MCP to uh, tray AI. And after that, we can go ahead and ask the AI agent to run a comprehensive test and see if we have any issues within our code. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on this option right here that says test locally. And then in click on this quick install option right here. And now, first of all, I need to create an API key. So I'll click on this option right here that says create a key. I'll click on new API key and I can name it let's say tray and I'll create the key just like that and now I can head back and if you're using cursor you can actually add this uh, MCP to cursor in just a single click but in our case we are using tray so I'll click on this other IDs option and I can copy this code right here maybe I can uh, copy this much part and now I'll open tray again and now I'll click on this plus button right here and select the option that says MCP and then I'll click on add and then I'll click on add manually and now all I have to do is to paste uh, that in here that is test sprites one and I need to grab my API key just like that and now all I have to do is to paste the API key in here just like that and I'll click on confirm and there you go the test sprite MCP is added and the tick sign means it is added and I can find all the tools that we have and now that we have added test sprite MCP Next step to run a comprehensive front end or back end test, all I have to do is to give a prompt in here. So I can simply go ahead and say, can you please run a full front end test using TestSprite MCP to make sure that our code is clean and does not have any issues. So this right here is the prompt I'll give and now I'll click on the send button right here and let's see. And again, if you want to use TestSprite in their web version, you can just head over to TestSprite's website and maybe I can close this one. And this right here is actually the MCP test section. And if you click on this create test option right here, you can go ahead and let's say, let's say you have like a staged environment or a testing environment and it is deployed. Well, you can go ahead and fill in all these details, like maybe click on next. And then you can give the endpoint names, the front end, the usernames and passwords, if any. And you can go ahead and carry out a test from their web interface as well. In which case, let's wait for it. And there you go. TestSprite has went ahead and opened up the testing configuration page. And here we need to fill in some details. So we explicitly asked the AI agent to run a front end test and the front end option is selected. Scope, I'll select it code base. We don't have user login, so I'll leave that as it is. And our server is running on localhost 3000. So that also looks good. Path looks good. And next up, we need to add a product specification doc. Well, what I can do is I'll go ahead and create a new task and I can simply go ahead and say, can you please create a product specification doc so that I can run a front end test for our application? Please create it in a .md file. And now I'll click on the send button. Why not, right? We can use AI itself to create a product specification doc. But if you already have like a product specification doc ready in PDF or whatever format, you can just go ahead and upload the same in here. So there you go. Trey has went ahead and created the MD file. Now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and uh, open the project and drag and drop this MD file in here. Just like that. And now I can click on continue and click on OK. So upload successful. And now if I open tray, if I open the other agent, so there you go. It has prepared a task list and it has actually went ahead and bootstrapped a test sprite front end test. All right. And now within seconds, the AI will go ahead and run a comprehensive test. So yeah, let's just wait for it. All right. So there you go. Just like that, in a couple of clicks, TestSprite MCP has started a full test and it has prepared around nine different tests that it is planning to carry out. And we just went ahead and configured a couple of options and hit enter. And TestSprite is already running the test for us. And now it will take some time. So all you have to do is to sit back and wait till it is done. And after that, TestSprite will come up with the test report. And if you have any problems in the test report, well, you can go ahead and feed that right straight into, let's say, Tray itself and ask Tray to fix all of the issues. In which case, it will take some time. So I'll wait till it is done and I'll see you afterwards. So far, seven out of nine tests is completed and five of them passed and two of them failed. And we have like two more to be completed. Okay, one more to go. So let's just wait for it anyways. So there you go. The testing process is now complete. And I believe we have like three tests failed and six of them passed. 
So it is going to create a new extensive documentation documenting the entire uh, thing in here. So all right, so we can find all that details and okay. So it has created the report as well, like the testing report and okay. So these are everything, right? And now the thing is that if I head over to my MCP test section right here on the web interface, I'll be now able to find the test that we just did right now. That is this one right here that says QR code and I can open it up and there you go. Here we have six of them passed and three of them failed. And for example, let's say, okay. So let's go ahead and inspect this one right here. And now the interesting thing is that you'll be able to find the screen recording of the AI agent trying to use your product and carrying out the testing operation. So I can play this one. There you go. The agent uh, entered some data, clicked on the generate button. All right. So all that you see in the screen right now is actually the AI agent that is the test sprite AI agent doing the test and it actually went ahead and made sure that our size drop down menu actually works right so it changes the uh, you know size and then try to regenerate the image and it actually went through and next step let's just go ahead and take a look at the failed test all right so so the test to verify that external API call to PNG fails okay all right, so here we have the failed test and then maybe I'll just open another one. So multi-line text. Okay, let's see. So the AI went ahead and filled in some data in multiple lines and made sure that it works. Okay, so the AI agent is basically doing all sorts of tests that we even might not think about, right? So that is the cool thing about using test sprite. And now that we have like three failed tests in here, I can go ahead and say, based on the test report, can you please go ahead and fix three of the failed tests? And now go ahead and click on the send button. And now what happens is that based on the test report that TestSprite has given us, the AI agent right within Solo will go ahead and fix it. So as you can see, TC004, 5 and 6 are the ones that failed. And now it will find all the data from the test report that the TestSprite has created. And then it will go ahead and fix the same. All right. So let's see. So there you go. Fix API failure handling in QR code generator, then make download gating deterministic on blob creation, ensure button disabled on blob failure. So it is actually implementing all of that. Okay. So if you do want to use test sprite to carry out testing operations, both front end and back end, you can just go ahead and click the link in the description below. Sign up for testsprite.com, add the MCP to tray, cursor, or whatever AI coding tool that you're using, and you can go ahead and carry out all these testing operations. And now this is pretty much everything that I wanted to show you in today's video. So the newest version of Tray is already live and the interesting thing is that you can now download and start using it for free until November 15th. So if you happen to watch this video before November 15th, just make sure to go ahead and try it out for free. Otherwise, you can just go ahead and select a paid plan and I believe you get the first month for just $3, okay? $3 and you still get like 600 fast requests and we also have like 300 bonus fast requests right now. And I hope you guys found this video useful. If yes, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.